your attention, your attention please. please. Everyone, Everyone quiet, quiet, please. please. I have my cool Inside the Orchestra drum here. My name is Dan, and I play in Inside the Orchestra. My main instrument is the trumpet, and I have a whole bunch of trumpets right here. And this one I play a lot. This is a trumpet. Can you say trumpet? I want you to do something for this art party with Inside the Orchestra. Okay. And I want you right now to get some pencils and get some crayons or maybe some paint and some paper. And I want you to draw something or color something just on the page that this music reminds you of or perhaps maybe what it makes you feel like. For example, maybe it just reminds you of a, of a rainy day. Or maybe it reminds you of elephants marching around. Or maybe it reminds you of birds. Or maybe it doesn't remind you of anything. It just makes you feel happy. Can you draw something happy? And so, I'm going to play a piece of music. I'm not going to want to tell you what it's about right away. I'll tell you after. Here it is. is about because the composer who wrote this music a long time ago told us what it was about. What do you think it was about? Well, it's about a guy walking around. This is walking around music. Let me play a little bit again and I want you to walk around the room. You ready? Continue the march around the room. That piece is called Promenade from Pictures at an Exhibition. And it's kind of interesting because earlier I asked you to draw or paint something that this music reminded you of. Well, the guy that wrote this music did just the opposite of that. He wrote the music because the pictures reminded him of something musical. So he saw the picture and wrote this music based on what he saw in the picture. In fact, this first piece is kind of strange because it's actually him walking around in the art gallery, in the place where all the pictures were hanging. And I want to play this again at the end of the show today. And I want you to put your pictures on the wall and then walk around and look at them, just like Mazurski did with this one. But I'm going to play another piece right now, and this is a little different. This is a piece based on a movie, and the trumpet, a lot of times in a movie, gets to play the good guy. When the hero comes in, when Superman comes in, or Spider-Man and saves the day. See if you know this little piece of music. Well, that was short, and you know, you've heard that before, probably. I have a trumpet that's very small, and it's called the piccolo trumpet. Piccolo is an Italian word. It means small. Can you say piccolo? Piccolo. A long time ago there was a composer who is still very famous named George Frederick Handel. And he wrote this piece of music. I'm going to play it for you right now. See if you can get
the name of that piece is The Rejoicing. Do you know what rejoicing is? It's when you're very happy about something and you're just so happy, you're saying, yay, 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 yay. And the piece of music, the occasion, was a fireworks show. It was a special anniversary for the king. This was in England, and he wanted some music to be played while the fireworks were going off. I'll bet you have seen fireworks, and maybe you could even draw a picture of some. They go in the sky and make pretty lights, and that was that. That's what that music was written for. I'm going to play a piece of music now that's very different than what we've been listening to before. In fact, it's not even orchestra music; it's jazz music. And um, because it's different, I want you to think about maybe drawing something different than you've ever drawn before. Something brand new for you. Maybe you haven't even thought about it, but take a second and, and just start drawing something that you have never ever drawn before. Because I'm going to make up a lot of this music. It's going to be stuff that I've never ever played before. And in music we call that improvisation. Can you say improvisation? Very nice. This piece is from a movie. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. I'm not going to tell you the title until afterward because I want you to come up with how it makes you feel without me interfering with that at all. So here it is. See, uh, the band, are you guys ready? Okay, the band is ready. Bass and drums and piano, I want you to come in right at the beginning. something totally different this time? That's cool. And if you want to, hang that picture on the wall because later on we're gonna walk around the room to that first piece of music that's music for walking around a room that has art on the wall. When you hear the trumpet, do you think, oh, this is gonna be so loud? Or, this is exciting, but I need to hold my ears. And you do like this and you, oh, that sounds better. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Sometimes it's too loud, but trumpets can also play very soft 
and sweetly. Now I'm going to play a piece for you like that right now. You might want to try to draw a picture to this. You might even dance a little bit. It's a very sweet song. I'm not going to tell you the name of it until the end. of Scotland and I don't know what you drew if you drew a flower that's actually what that is about a bluebell in Scotland is a blue flower and they're all over the sides of the hills so I have a lot of cool interesting trumpet kind of instruments and they all have one thing in common they all require you to buzz your lips into them like this now some of them you have to buzz like this really low and some of them very tight really high. Can you do that? Or like this. You could try that at home. And they all have that in common, but they're not all made out of brass. In fact, I'm going to play the seashell trumpet for you right now. This is called a conch shell. It has a little hole right here where I buzz my lips and the sound comes out of this big area right here. When I blow this, it makes a really cool sound and this would have been used years ago as a cell phone, as a way for people to talk from one town to another or from one house to another because they didn't have any way to do that. They didn't have electricity or cell phones or even the internet. So someone would learn how to play these and they would have certain calls that they would do. For example, let me see. Hello? Yes, I'd like a large pizza. What? No, no, no mushrooms. Of course not. I, and what else? Yes, yes, french fries would be good with that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, over the house over there on the hill. Yeah, you know the one. Okay, bye-bye. No, that's not how they did it. They would have to play it like this, buzz your lips into here. Now, I can get two notes on this seashell, and sometimes I put my hand in here, and it will change the note a little bit. Check this out. Pretend like you're on a mountaintop, and you're hiking, and you hear a sound coming from the other mountaintop. interesting trumpets that are made out of metal and they're called bugles. Can you say bugle? This would have been played a lot of different times of the day. Now I want you to use your imagination here for a second and try to guess what this signal would be for. I'm gonna play two signals. They come at different times of the day. So try to figure out what this one is. at the opposite time of the day. picture of this. The first one is for it's time to get up and the second one was for time to go to sleep. That's what a bugle does. 
you might have maybe even been at a sporting event like the Rockies or the Broncos and heard what's called charge. I'm going to play the charge and I want you to yell charge when it's done, okay? Charge! Now, this one's really cool because it's all stretched out straight. See that? Most of all these other ones have some kind of curve in them. But if you were to draw this one, it would have a mouthpiece, and then it would get bigger and bigger, wider that is, wider, wider, wider until the bell. And this was used back in the olden days before they had the mailman in a truck. He would ride into a town on a horse, and he would play one of these. This is actually called a post horn. And it's also played at horse races. Now, back in the days when the mailman had this, he would be riding on a horse, and he would ride in the town and actually play it while he was on the horse. Can you imagine that? Let's all bounce up and down we're riding a horse. up and down. But that's what they would do. And then he, everyone in the town would know, well, the mailman's here, and let's run and get our letters from uh, our friends. This little horn is called the shofar. Can you say shofar? Shofar, show good. It's not easy to play because this is so small where you have to buzz your lips. I have a bigger one that I think I might do better on. And these instruments were played also for a signal, like a cell phone, and to signal all kinds of things like a special holiday, or uh, it's time for everyone to go move to another area. And uh, this is a larger shofar. It sounds like this. notes on a shofar. I think in general though most people just try to get two. Now I'm going to go over there and get another instrument from Australia. This would be really easy to draw. It's just a straight stick. It's a tube but it has a really cool name. Didgeridoo. Can you say didgeridoo? Yes it's from Australia and it has a very large mouthpiece here. Usually these are made out of beeswax. And this is a branch from a eucalyptus tree, okay? Now there's one from another country here. This country is India. This is a really interesting instrument. Because when you play it, it doesn't really look like this. See, here's the bell. But this part comes out like a telescope. And it's a Nepalese signaling horn. And here's the mouthpiece, here's the bell, and it sounds like this. It's kind of fun because when you have to take it to a gig, you just fold it up and then walk to the concert. Have you ever drawn a picture, or maybe you had to sing a song, or something like that, or maybe even play an instrument for your family members, and they just clap and they tell you that was really awesome? Isn't that fun to make a work of art and have people appreciate it, people like it? That's really fun, especially if you really worked hard on it. And I really get a lot of satisfaction from playing the trumpet or writing music, especially if I can relate to other people who are the audience. And I want to thank you for being my audience today, because I've enjoyed this a great deal. Thanks for listening to all these crazy instruments. You can always go on Inside the Orchestra and uh, website and find out other events like this. I know there's going to be an art party again with another instrument next Saturday. 
Now, I want you to do me a favor before we go. I want you to get some of your papers that you wrote, drew pictures on, and I want you to put them around, maybe on the floor, in a circle, or put them on the wall, and we're going to walk around just like that first composer did that I played at the beginning. He wrote a piece all about him, self, walking around in the Museum of Art, and he drew, and he... Uh, took the pictures that he saw and set them to music. Now you did just the opposite of that today. I hope you were able to listen to some of the music and draw pictures about what you heard with your ears. Now we're going to take one more stroll around the artworks. Are you ready? Bye-bye.